Welcome to 5.3, where we're going to be finding values um, using our z-scores, so we continue. Each year, entrance to the Boston Marathon is determined by the running time. How do you determine the running time if we only want the top 10% to run? Or we want to elicit people to try a new drug, but need to elicit people within the bottom 20% of unhealthy BMI. How do we determine what the BMI rate should be? And finally, Westfield State only wants to select those who scored better than 60% of their peers on SATs. So what's the score we require? These are things that you can answer using the z-score. All right, so the first thing we need to do is figure out the z-score for certain areas. Um, as we had on the previous screen, if we want the top 10%, we want to know the z-score associated with the top 10%. Or if we want the bottom 20%, we've got to figure out the z-score with the bottom 20%. And there's two ways that you can do that. Uh, so for number one, find the z-score that corresponds to the cumulative area of 0.3632. Well, using the table, we've looked up percentages, but now we're going to use the percentages to look up the z-score. So 0.3632. If you look, you can see it's right here in the crossroads of what they've highlighted. And if you go to the left, you can see that it's going to be negative 0.3. And if you go up, five hundredths. So the z-score that would correspond to 0.3632 would be negative 0.35. And that makes sense because it's about, um, this right here would be about 36 percent and we've got a negative z-score we know which is below zero. Zero would be 50 percent. So slightly to the left of that gives us 36 percent and that makes sense to me. Alright, another way you can do this is look it up in your graphing calculator and here's how you're going to do it. Okay, I very slyly was able to put the directions um, for you guys to use your graphing calculator. So if you go into your graphing calculator, um, you can calculate this and you'll see that it goes out a few more decimal places. And when we have the z-score that we're using, um, the mean's going to be zero and the standard deviation is going to be one. And the area is just this value that we have right there. So um, let's try number two. For number two, they want us to find the z-score that has 10.75% of the distribution to the areas to the right. So if you think about that, they want 10.75% of the area to be to the right. If we know that the entire um, normal distribution curve is 100% or 1, I'm just going to turn the 10.75 into a decimal, move that two places. I'm going to find 1 minus 0 0.1075 and see what that equals. And that equals 0.8925. Now I'm sure you guys remember that when we do the z-score, it goes from the left end all the way up. So that's why I've got to figure out what that area is um, from the left side, not necessarily from the right. So I need to find the z-score that's going to represent this green area, or the 0.8925. And now that I know what the area is that I'm looking for, um, I can look it up in the table, or I can use my graphing calculator. So I'm going to do graphing calculator, second distribution. I'm going to go to inverse norm, and I'm going to put in my 0.8925, comma, and then my mean is 0, comma, and 1 for the standard deviation. And it looks like I have a z-score that's going to be 1.24. 1.24 would be the z-score um, for number two. The z-score with 10.75% of the area to the right. Find the z-score that has 96.16% of the distribution's area to the right. So again, we're going to do the same thing. Okay. 96.16 to the right. So if I take 1, and I'm going to make that be a decimal, minus 0.9616, that's going to equal 0 0.9616, 0 0.0384. So um, right here is what I've got to look for for a z-score. Okay, and if I find the z-score for that section Oops, that should be an 8. For that section right there, then I know 96.16% um, of the area will be to the right of the z-score that I have for this area. Okay, so I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do second 
distribution, I'm going to go to um, inverse norm, and I'm going to put 0 0.0384, comma 0, comma 1, and I'm going to get negative 1.77 for my z-score. Okay, wow. So that's my z-score, which makes sense to me because it's going to be, um, if this is 0 in the center, and I'm trying to capture all of this area right here, having a z-score to the left will make sense to me. Okay. And lastly, um, I'm going to do the this one here, number 2 in black. For number 2, they want to have a z-score for which 95% lies between the negative z and the positive z. What that means is they want to have something that looks like this. And they want it to be evenly distributed about the mean, where it's zeros here. So if you think that I've got 95%, Okay, so I'm going to say 1 minus 0.95 is going to equal 0 0.05. So this 0 0.05 has to be distributed between both of these sections. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find, um, take 0 0.05 and divide it by 2. I'm really bad at decimals, so that's why I use my calculator. That's going to equal 0 0.025. So the area associated with this green part here is 0 0.025, and similarly, it's the same area right here. This is also going to be 0 0.025 because I had to make it equal on both sides. So I just have to look up the z-score for the area of 0 0.025. So um, second uh, distribution, which is the VARS button, inverse norm, 0 0.025, comma, 0, comma, 1. And I get, um, I'm going to write it in another color. Let's go back to black it's going to be negative 1.96. And because we know it's evenly distributed between them, this is going to be positive 1.96. So it's just the positive and the negative of the values. So for number four, the z-score for which 95% lies between um, negative z and positive z is just 1.96 and 1.96. And that represents 95% of the data being about the mean. All right, finding the z-score that kind of corresponds to each percentile. Um, for the first one, they just want you to find uh, the z-score, and they, you're going to turn that into a decimal for 0 0.05. For the second one, they want you to find a z-score or a 0 0.50. And the third one, we want to have a z-score for um, the area that's 0 0.90. Now, I'm not going to do this. You're going to do it on your own. However... 5%, if you think about the normal curve, right? 5% um, is going to be over here somewhere, so I should expect a negative z-score. 90% is going to be over here somewhere, right? So I should expect a positive z-score. Um, and this one, you probably don't even have to do math if you just think about it for half a second. I hope you can figure it out. All right, how do we convert, convert the score to usable data? Um, remember this formula. Sometimes we have to find the z-score given information or find the information given the z-score. We're going to be flipping back and forth. I love cats, so here we go. That records the weights of cats treated at a clinic. The weights are normally distributed with a mean of 9 pounds. All right, so we've got mu equals 9 and a standard deviation, so standard deviation equals 2. Find the weight the weight of the cat with the corresponding z-scores. So now, now they're giving me the z-score. So my formula is going to be z equals x minus, oops, I didn't mean to do the bar, so get rid of that, x minus mu over the standard deviation. So I have everything except for x, because I don't know what the cat weighs, and usually you plug in what the cat weighs and get your z-score. So I'm just going to go the other way. All right, so the z-score is 1.96, and that's going to equal x, which we don't know, minus the mean of 9 divided by 2. Hopefully your algebra brains are kicking in. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. So 1.96, oops, 1.96 1 times 2 equals, so I get 3.92 equals x minus 9, because these cancel. And I'm going to add 9, and I'm going to add 9. And I'm going to say that this cat weighs 12.92 pounds. And if, let's think about this. The average cat weighs... 9 pounds. We had a z-score that was 1.96. So that's still usual, but we're almost in the unusual territory. So we've got a fat little kitty. The standard deviation is 2. 
So to be um, one standard deviation would, away would have been um, 9 plus 2 is 11. To be two standard deviations away, nine, uh, 11 plus 2 more would be 13. So yeah, they're at the tippy top of becoming unusually weighted. All right, so you have to do these two. And these are going to be part of our warm-up in class. Give it a try and use this as your model. And uh, additionally, we're going to be exploring these concepts in class. But what I would like you to please do is define what's given. Okay, so here you have mean. Here you have standard deviation. And here you have the top 10%. Ooh, where are you going? So we've got the top 10%. So what I want you to do is you can figure out the z-score of the top 10% by figuring out this is 10%. <clears throat> What's the z-score associated with that area? So come in with the started again. And this one as well. Give it a try. See how you do, and we'll wrap it up in class. Thank you.